Thanks everyone for making it to the season finale of our Biostat series, part six, error and analysis. This is Mike again with Strudel Medicine Reviews and make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start off by talking about types of error, starting with type one error. So type one error is also known as false positive error. So this would be the type of error when you call result positive when it actually is not. False positive error or type one error is represented by alpha, which we usually set to 0 0.05, but this is something that we set. Again, this is essentially the rate at which we call false positives. So if you remember in the two by two table, in which case you have your gold standard on the X axis and the test that we are looking for on the Y axis, remember test is tall. Then you have your true positives and then your false positives and then your false negatives, and then your true negatives. Right, because here we have our positive negatives, positive negatives. So alpha will be your false positive rate. So one, the way I like to remember type one error is the boy who cried wolf. So remember the boy who cried wolf who said, the wolves are coming, the wolves are coming, and gonna eat all our sheep. But then the, all the villagers came and rushed, but they didn't see any wolves. So that's a classic example of a type 1 error, in which case you call a result positive, in which case you say there are wolves coming, but there actually were none. Now let's contrast that with type 2 error. Type 2 error is your false negative error, and it's usually related to power, which is 1 minus beta. So the higher your power, the lower your false negative error. This type of error, type two error, is really bad. Why is that? Because you're calling something that should be called a positive as negative, or saying that the disease or whatever is going on is not present. Type two error is affected by sample size, effect size, and measurement precision. So the higher the sample size, the higher the effect size, or the difference in two populations, and the better the measurement precision, the lower your type 2 error is going to be and the higher your power is going to be. Type 2 error is also represented by beta. Now an example of type 2 error and the reason why I say type 2 error I typically remember as the more bad type of error is think of this example. Let's say you're sleeping and then all of a sudden there is a fire in the home but the smoke detector doesn't go off even though there is a fire and now all of a sudden you're you're you wake up and your home is in flames, all because the smoke detector didn't work and committed a type two error. Now, our last slide of kind of content is statistical analysis. So I'm just gonna go over quickly the different types of tests that they like to test on USMLE. So the t-test will compare two group means. So this will be used to compare two different groups with continuous data it will not be able to be used for more than two groups. However, with if you do have more than two groups, you can use ANOVA, which will compare three or more group means that will also be continuous variables. When you look at type of data, all continuous means is that typically the data has to be an integer, like one, two, three, etc. However, when we get to chi-square tests, this will test the relationship between categorical variables such as yes or no. So you can look at variables like smoking versus cancer and looking at yes or no as your output metrics and they don't all have to be integers. You also have a Fisher's exact which is less commonly tested but it's essentially like a chi-square analysis but for small samples like if you're going to look at rare side effects in a small trial. So let's do some practice questions. Question one, a researcher compares the effectiveness of two antibiotics and finds a statistically significant difference with a p-value of 0.02. However, in reality, both antibiotics are equally effective. What type of error has occurred? A, type one error. B, type two error. C, confounding. D, selection bias. So here you can see that the question is asking you to identify a type of error. In this case, the 
The study found that there was a statistically significant difference, although in reality, there is no difference. So this would be an example of type 1 error because you're calling um, a false positive, right? So you're incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. So that would be a classic example of type 1 error or remember the boy who cried wolf. Question 2. A study compares two antihypertensive drugs and finds no statistically significant difference in their effect on blood pressure. The p-value is 0 0.1. Later research confirms that one drug is more effective than the other. What type of error best explains this result? A. Type 1 error. B. Type 2 error. C. Measurement bias. D. Confounding bias. So here you, we are again asked about a type of error, and you see that there are two antihypertensive drugs, and the study finds that there is no statistically significant difference. However, later research confirms that one is more effective than the other. So this would be an example of type 2 error, which is a false negative. And this is when you uh, fail to reject a false null hypothesis, or essentially do not call a statistically significant difference when there really is one. Remember the fire alarm that didn't go off. Question 3. Researchers compare the mean fasting glucose levels of two groups one receiving a new medication and the other receiving placebo. Both groups have normal distributions and sample sizes are equal. Which statistical test is most appropriate? A. Chi-square test. B. Paired t-test. C. Two-sample t-test. Or D. ANOVA. So this is an example of identifying what statistical analysis is best for, our, for a particular study. In this case, you have two separate groups, and they both have uh, continuous variables with integers, which would be the mean fasting glucose levels. So the correct statistical test in this case would be a two-sample t-test because you're comparing the means of two independent groups. All right, question number four. A study measures systolic blood pressure in 30 patients before and after eight weeks of dietary intervention. The data are normally distributed. Which statistical test is most appropriate for this comparison? A. ANOVA B. Chi-square test C. Paired t-test D. Fisher's exact test So this question is again asking us to compare means and use uh, determine what type of statistical analysis would be best for um, this particular data set. In this case, we have paired samples right because we have patients before and after dietary intervention so this in this case you would want to be using c a paired t-test question five a clinical trial compares weight loss among three different diet groups each group contains 50 participants and weight loss is normally distributed which statistical method is most appropriate to compare the average weight loss across the three diets a Paired t-test, B, chi-square test, C, ANOVA, D, Fisher's exact test. So in this question, we have three different diet groups, each with 50 participants, and we're calculating weight loss. So this is a continuous variable. So we would be want to be using ANOVA for the analysis because we have three different groups. So C, ANOVA is the correct answer. Question six. A researcher wants to determine whether smoking status is associated with the presence or absence of lung cancer in a sample of 500 adults. Which statistical test is most appropriate? A. Paired t-test. B. Chi-square test. C. ANOVA. D. Linear regression. So here in this question, we have a categorical variable because it's essentially yes or no with the presence or absence of lung cancer in a sample of 500 adults. So in this case, we need to be doing a chi-square test because we're comparing proportions across two uh, categorical variables. Question seven. In a study of a rare genetic disorder, 10 patients are treated with drug A and 10 with drug B. One patient in drug A and five patients in drug B show improvement. 
which test is most appropriate to compare proportions between the groups? A. Chi-square test. B. Students t-test. C. ANOVA. D. Fisher's exact test. In this case, you have 10 patients being treated with drug A and 10 with drug B. And only a, so remember, this is a pretty small number of patients, and only one patient in drug A group improves, and five in drug B show improvement. So because you have expected frequency of less than five, you want to be using a Fisher's exact test instead of a chi-square test. So D, Fisher's exact test, is the correct answer. Question eight. A study comparing two interventions for stroke prevention has a small sample size and fails to detect a statistically significant difference. Later studies with larger samples show a benefit. Which of the following would have increased the study's power? A. Increasing the p-value threshold. B. Increasing the sample size. C. Reducing variability in the data. Or D. B and C. So remember that power is 1 minus beta, and beta is our type 2 error. So ways to reduce beta or increase power would be to increase the sample size, increase the measurement difference or the effect difference between two different groups, or to reduce variability in the data. So that means D, both B and C, would be correct. The most common and effective way, though, to increase power would be B, increasing the sample size. And you should often look for that for exam questions. This is our last question, question number nine. In a randomized trial comparing a new antihypertensive drug with placebo, the p-value for blood pressure reduction is 0.08. The investigator concludes the drug is not effective, even though a small true effect exists. What error may have occurred? A, type 1 error. B, type 2 error. C, measurement error. Or D, observer bias. So this question is asking us to determine which type of error occurred, in which case the investigator says that there is no statistical difference between the uh, placebo and the new antihypertensive drug, even though a small true effect does exist. So this would be an example of calling a false negative in saying that there is no true difference even though there is. So this is kind of like the smoke detector that doesn't go off, right? You're failing to detect a true difference, which is an example of type 2 error, which is B. Oh, we do have one more question. Question number 10. A medical student is analyzing data comparing the prevalence of asthma in urban versus rural settings. The data are categorical and collected from a large sample. Which of the following is the most appropriate test? A. ANOVA, B, chi-square test, C, paired t-test, or D, linear regression. So in this question, we have categorical data collected from a large sample. So it would be greater than 5, you know, assuming it's a large sample. So we have categorical, categorical data like proportions from a large sample. The best way to analyze that would be a chi-square test. All right, thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment and subscribe, and thank you all for watching our Biostat series. Peace.